Hey, what's going on, guys? Tanmay here. Welcome back to another video tutorial on data structures and algorithms. And let's continue with our hashing topic. We are on collision control, and just in the previous video, we took an introduction to understand what is a collision and how it happens. And we also discussed that there are different ways to manage the collision, and those are called collision control or collision management techniques. So on the right hand side, this is what we saw that there are generally two methodologies to handle collision. One is closed hashing, also called as open addressing, which has three basic variants: linear probing, quadratic probing, and double hashing. And the second method is open hashing, also called as separate chaining. In this video, we're going to focus on open hashing, also called as separate chaining. And before I proceed, I am assuming that you guys have already seen the previous videos of hashing and collision control in this DSA playlist. If not, please do check it out. That will set you up very well to understand this video as well. In this video, as I said, we will understand in detail what is separate chaining. We will see an example. We will also try to solve a problem sum based on this understanding. And I hope you know what is collision control. Essentially, in very simple terms, the process of finding an alternative index position in the hash table is called collision control or collision management. Okay, makes sense. All right, let's see what is this separate chaining. Okay, so separate chaining is a technique which uses linked list data structure. Also known as a chain, hence the term chaining. Okay, and it's one of the most popular and commonly used techniques in order to handle collisions. So when multiple elements are hashed into the same slot, which is nothing but a collision, so then these elements are inserted into singly linked list kind of structures, which are known as chain. Okay, now it is not necessary that they are arranged in singly linked list pattern only. There are different ways of implementation. We'll talk about that in a minute. But just to Visually show you. You can see over here in the diagram. So the example is we have to store ten elements in the hash table. The elements are given as follows: five, seven, twenty-five, eighty-four, thirty-two, and so on and so on. And the hash function h of k is given as key mod phi. Okay. So I've written down the keys over here. They all go into this hash function. The hash function, as I said, is h of key mod phi. So five mod phi is going to give you zero. It will go over here at index position. Zero, and you can see I have stored the value over here. Now you can see this is a singly linked list structure. So the first value that you store in the hash table is basically nothing but the head pointer of a singly linked list, which points to the next item or next value in the singly linked list. Okay. So initially, of course, phi will go at the zero position. So then we have seven. Seven mod phi is going to give you two. Correct. So seven will go at index position two. So this is where we store seven. Then we have twenty five. So twenty five is obviously divisible by five. So twenty five mod five is going to give us zero. So now you can see we already have five, and we also want to store twenty five at the same index position zero. So this is a collision, obviously. But now since we're using this singly linked list concept and we're using this separate chaining methodology, so the first element five which was stored, as I said, is nothing but the head pointer which points to the next linked list item. Which is going to be twenty five. So twenty five will be stored as the next item in this singly linked list way. Similarly, we also have fifty, which is also completely divisible. So that comes also at zero index position. So hence it goes over here. And as you can see, accordingly, eighty four mod five will give you four. So eighty four will be stored at index position four like this. Then we have thirty two. So thirty two mod five is going to give us two. We already have seven. So seven will act as the head pointer and. 32 will be the next element in this singly linked list, which is pointed by this pointer. We've already studied singly linked list, doubly linked list in this DSA playlist, guys. If you really want a detailed explanation of those data structures, please do check them out. Moving ahead, we have 61. 61 mod 5 is gonna give us 1, so 61 goes at index position 1. 3 mod 5 will give us 3, so 3 will go at index position 3 in the hash table. 2 mod 5 is again gonna give us 2, so 2. Already has seven and thirty-two, and again two will also be placed at index position two, so it will be attached at the end of this singly linked list. So we have three elements at index position two, we have three elements at index position zero, we have two elements at index position three, because the last element thirty-three, thirty-three mod five is going to give us three, so it will come over here at index position three, and so on and so forth. So this is how open hashing or separate chaining in a very basic way works. Now, as I said, this linked list implementation is not necessary that it will always be a singly linked list. It can be, you know, implemented as a tree data structure also. It can be implemented as a binary tree for faster access. Okay, so this was a method to, you know, 
mitigate this problem of collision but when you are doing this collision control it obviously comes with its advantages and disadvantages so talking about the advantages obviously it is simple to implement instead of you know directly storing the value in the hash table you store it as a singly linked list the second advantage is that the hash table will never fill up now if you see we have 10 index positions in the hash table we had 10 keys but even though we had 10 keys only the first five indexes were occupied that is because of this hash function this hash function made sure that all of them were stored in the first five index positions itself because it was a mod 5 okay so even if you let's say want to store a new value let's say it is 27 so 27 mod 5 will give you what it will give you 2 correct so 2 is index position over here so we will attach 27 over here so note that these locations will never fill up that is actually an advantage as well as a disadvantage right but the thing is since we have these locations empty we can always add up more elements to the change depending upon the hash function obviously currently our hash function is such a way that always taking mod 5 hence we are only occupying the first five index positions okay the last point in advantages is that it is mostly used when it is unknown how many and how frequently keys may be inserted or deleted okay so when you don't know how many keys and how frequently these keys are gonna come that is when this separate chaining methodology is used because it is simple to implement now this also comes with disadvantage because the cache performance of chaining is not good as keys are stored using linked list basically this cancels the main purpose of hash table right the hash table is supposed to be fast in storing as well as in accessing the data which which does that in o of one that is constant time this is something that we discussed in the first video of hash hashing and hash table data structure right so please make sure you watch that but when you introduce a singly linked list let's say you want to find out the number two okay let's say you are searching for the key number two what do you do you put that in this hash function two mod five will give you two so you go to this index position two but when you see immediately are you getting the value no you are not getting this immediate value right the first value at index position 2 is 7 which means that in order to find 2 you have to go from 7 to 32 you have to go from 32 to 2 and then you get your value right so it is not instantaneous it is not constant time now because you still have to linearly search the linked list imagine this linked list having 10 elements and at the end we have 2 so it will have to make 10 hops before you find the number 2 correct so this is where the cache performance or the performance due to chaining takes a hit and it is not constant time always the next disadvantage is that there is wastage of space as you see there are some blocks that will always be empty because of the hash method or hash function then we also said that if the chain becomes too long then the search time can become o of n which is the worst case which is like the same as a array correct we just discussed that let's say you're searching for the key 2 okay but 2 is at the very end of this entire list there are many more linked list items over here and then we have 2 over here at index position 2 so when you do 2 mod 2 you get this index position but you're not getting the value correct if you're searching for let's say if you're searching for 37 okay 37 mod 5 is gonna give you 2 which is index position 2 let's say 37 is somewhere over here and there are many more linked list items in between so this will make you go from the first item to the next to the third and of course since it is a singly linked list you have to go linearly starting from the head pointer till the end till you find 37 so that is again wasting a lot of time which means that the search time can become o of n which is the worst case and one last disadvantage is that it uses extra space for links so singly linked list is not a very space friendly data structure because along with storing the data it also has to store the link or the pointer variable so it is an extra overhead which extra space for links is required okay so these are some advantages as well as disadvantages of using the separate chaining methodology okay so now that you've understood the basics of open hashing that is separate chaining what is separate chaining how it looks like visually in the diagram what are the advantages and disadvantages let's take a quick example let's try to solve a quick example sum so that you get a good hands-on with this technique okay so here's a question store these 10 elements in the hash table we have these elements use the hash function h of whereas the function is key mod 7 okay 
So we have the first key, we put it in the hash function. We say 5 mod 7. 5 mod 7 is obviously gonna be 5. So index position 5, correct? So this is where we place our very first element 5. Okay. Now remember this is stored as a singly linked list item. So it will have a pointer to pointing to the next item. Currently there is nothing over here. Let's take a look at the second item which is 7. So 7 mod 7 is obviously gonna be 0 which means index position 0. So at index position 0 we will store 7 again as a singly list item. Okay. Alright. Then we have 25. 25 mod 7 is gonna give us 4. Correct. So index position 4 is where we store 25. Then we have 84. 84 mod 7 is gonna give us 0 because it 84 is completely divisible by 7. So again at index position 0 we already have 7. So one more element gets attached over here in the singly linked list and that is 84. Then we have 32. So 32 mod 7 is gonna give us 4. So index position 4 we already have 25. So 32 comes over here. Then we have 61. 61 mod 7 is gonna give us 5. So index position 5 we already have 5 over here. So 61 will come over here. Then we have 3. 3 mod 7 obviously is gonna give us 3. So index position 3 we don't have any element. So 3 will be stored here as the first element of the singly list item. Then we have 2. 2 mod 7 again is gonna give us 2. So index position 2 we will store 2 over here as the first element. Then we have 50. 50 mod 7 is gonna give us 1. So at index position 1 we will store 50. Lastly we have 33. 33 mod 7 is gonna give us 5. So at index position 5 we already have 5, we already have 61. So 33 will be attached as the third element in this singly linked list at index position 5. So this is the entire solution for this question. You guys can get such questions in your exams. This hashing function can be different. Okay. There can be other expressions. There can be multiplication. There can be division. There can be subtraction and you can get a little bit more complicated functions also. So make sure you understand this function first and calculate these indexes accordingly. Depending upon these indexes, then you have to attach each key inside the hash table value section as elements of singly linked list. Okay. All right. So this was the entire separate chaining methodology of collision control or collision management in hashing. I hope you got a very good understanding of what is separate chaining technique, how it is used, how visually it looks like in the hash table, what are its advantages, what are its disadvantages. And we also took a practical example, a numerical problem. We solved it on the digital blackboard. Okay, I'm gonna wrap up this video over here. In the next video, we will understand the other collision control methodology that is closed hashing, also known as open addressing. So I'm gonna wrap up this video over here. If you like this video, let me know in the comments of this video was. Do share it with your friends. Please give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.